A couple weeks ago, we looked at Jesus' discussion about the importance of placing relationship above the urgency of even religious practice. That's the passage that immediately follows yesterday's video about Jesus being the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. If you'd like to see that video, uh, the one about anger and reconciliation, you can do so by visiting the link in the description below or somewhere up on the screen here. As I mentioned yesterday, I'm trying to fill in the gaps where I've jumped around in the Sermon on the Mount with these devotionals. And that lands me in an uncomfortable passage this morning. You see, Jesus talks about lust. You know, in light of how often we talk about all these different scriptures and the topics we find in them, it's interesting to me just how uncomfortable a discussion of lust is for most of us. And yet, Jesus' second moral teaching, right after talking about making amends or setting right the conflict between ourselves and others, the topic is lust. Here's what Jesus says. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that if a man looks at a woman with lustful intent, some translations actually say, with lust in his heart, he has already committed adultery with her, in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. Think about this. Jesus in these passages equates anger with murder and lust with adultery. It's a bit much, right? I mean, tell me I'm not being overly sensitive here, but it does seem like Jesus is taking this equation a bit far. I I'm not just supposed to act the way God wants me to act, but I'm supposed to actually subject my inner thoughts to the will of God? Who does this Jesus guy think he is anyway? Oh, that's right. Son of God, maker of heaven and earth, savior of humanity, the good shepherd, the one who loves me enough to give his life for me. So when Jesus tells us that the contents of our heart the words of our mouth and the, the wandering of our eyes are just as important as the actions of our hands, maybe we should take him seriously? I want us to notice something here. All of these little moral teachings that Jesus gives, and I don't use little with the intent of minimizing them, I use them to say that there is a big picture behind them. All of these moral teachings, these statements about the heart, and soul of the law that God has given to humanity, every one of them places the significance of the other person in a relationship over the pursuit of our own pleasure, our own gain, our own comfort. Think back to when God created Adam. Adam was alone, the sole human. Now, yes, God was present and involved in his life, but Adam had no suitable helper. Then God creates Eve, Adam's equal with Eve, God addresses the first thing in all of creation that he says is not good. It is not good that the man should be alone. So Eve is made so that Adam is not alone because it's not good for anyone to be alone. It's so important that we have other people in our lives that God makes Adam a helper of the same stuff that Adam himself is made of. Now, some people have taken this to mean that other people are here for their own benefit. Kind of a God put you here so I can enjoy you mentality. I'm telling you right now, that's backwards. God didn't place other people here for your benefit. God put you here for the benefit of others. Now, to be clear, obviously that means that we're all here for one another's benefit. But we all want to cast ourselves in the role of Adam and act as though other people were placed here for us when I think the core message of the creation of Eve is that I am here, I am here for the benefit of others. 
Other people are not objects for me to ogle or seek my own pleasure through, and they aren't targets for my anger when they've displeased me. Instead, I am here to be a blessing to the people around me. It's the difference between asking, what do I get out of this person, and how can I bless this person? Today, I want to challenge you to hear the heart of the law, which Jesus sums up in, in two ways. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Ask yourself this question, how will you love your neighbor today? Will you see them as an object for your benefit, which means you love yourself, or will you see yourself as a tool in God's hands to benefit them, which means you love them? That's all today. I love you.